Welcome to the ECB podcast, bringing you insights into the world of economics and central banking. My name is Michael Steen, and today's topic is digitalization and jobs in the euro area. The digital economy is transforming how we work, where we work, and when we work. Some even worry it might change whether we work. In recent months, the coronavirus pandemic has sped up this transformation for many employees as they worked from home. But the digital economy goes further than that. It affects output, investment, productivity, prices, and labor markets. So we decided to spend the next two episodes looking at this topic. How does the increased use of digital technologies change the way we work? Is the historical fear of automation taking away our jobs justified? Or do our tasks and skills simply evolve to meet the new conditions? Before we turn to our first guest, I'd just like to say we're back in the building, sort of. We recorded our last few podcasts from home, and in this one we're doing it in a socially distanced way in a meeting room at the top of the ECB. Our first guest today is Robert Anderton, an economist at the European Central Bank. Robert, thanks a lot for taking the time and welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. So you recently co-authored this paper on digitalization and its impact on the euro area economy. And we wanted to discuss some of your findings with you and your co-authors. Um, but the first question is, let's maybe briefly define digitalization. What do we actually mean by that? Yes, it covers also many decades, starting off with uh, mainframe computers uh, that eventually led to personal computers. And then uh, we move on to nowadays things like artificial intelligence. So it's a very broad term covering all these aspects of computerization, automation, robotization. The, the paper we're talking about today is called Virtually Everywhere, Digitalization and the Euro Area and EU Economies. Um, and we'll obviously link to that in the show notes. Now, there are 19 different economies in the euro area and there are 27 in, in the European Union. Um, but what did you mean by virtually everywhere? Is that a, in a sense we're not quite there yet? The answer is it depends. So our paper considers a number of measures of the degree of digitalization because no measure is perfect and because there are many different aspects of digitalization. The first is a composite indicator computed by the European Commission, which is the Digital Economy and Society Index. And what this index shows is that uh, some dimensions of digitalization are now at roughly similar levels across the EU, for example, broadband connectivity, while others, such as the use of the internet, can vary significantly across European countries. And according to this measure, the most digital economies in the EU are Finland, Sweden, the Netherlands, and Denmark. When we looked at the size of digital economy subsectors, including manufacturing of digital products, as well as IT services, telecommunications, and other related activities, it is clear that the digital economy is larger in the US than in most of the euro area and EU countries with the digital economy in the euro area about two-thirds the size of the US. The third measure I'd like to mention is robots, because robot adoption is another aspect of digitalization. The EU and the euro area are on par with the US, but both are far behind Japan. However, some EU countries are also at the frontier in terms of robotization. For example, Germany has as many robots as Japan. Digitalization is indeed virtually everywhere and transforming our economies, but to differing degrees across the euro area and EU countries and across continents. Okay, so, so the, surprisingly, Germany uh, on, on the par with Japan on, on, on the, the number of robots, but, um, but the big picture there is lagging behind in, uh, against the US and then these, these, these quite significant differences between euro area and, and EU countries uh, individually. How, how do we explain these differences? Well, a lot has to do with country characteristics. Some of those characteristics are at least to a large extent given, such as the size of an economy or its structure. Other characteristics may be heavily influenced by economic policies and so-called framework conditions, including institutions and governance. A country with a large manufacturing base may have had more opportunities to apply automation and robotization to production processes and or be involved in the manufacture of digital products. Economic policy also plays a role. 
where the framework conditions are favorable to the adoption of new technologies, those technologies are likely to diffuse faster and be more widespread across the economy. What we found is that the countries with high quality institutions and governance tended to have higher levels of digitalization. Conversely, progress may be held back if the returns to invest in cannot be fully realized because of weak institutions or governance. So one way this has a major effect on the economy is, is labor markets. And I think your research shows that whether a job is lost or not depends on the tasks and skills it involves, and of course the industry. Um, also the way a country is set up, its policies, institutions and governments play a role. So the question is, what's the situation in the Euro area? How do the differences between different countries affect their labor markets? Yeah, the effects of digitalization that occur through the labor market are indeed very important and for two main reasons. One is that the labor market implications of digitalization may be important for each and every one of us. Another is that over history, technological advances have entailed fears of job losses. The evidence suggests that digitalization raises productivity and economic activity, but may not always and not everywhere increase employment. Whether a job exists or not, depends on the tasks and the skills it involves, the sector or industry in which it resides, and also how the country is set up in terms of policies, institutions, and governance. The effect on employment depends on whether technology is a complement or a substitute to labor. And this is not always clear cut. Consider the role of robots, for example. Where the exposure to robots is high, some jobs become redundant. I mean, those jobs, that consist of routine tasks that can be taken over by robots. At the same time, other jobs are created to perform tasks like putting in place the robots, monitoring and maintaining them. Secondly, the results of a special ECB survey of large firms provide some insights into the impacts of digitalization on European labor markets. Digitalization was seen by those firms as replacing some low and medium skilled jobs but not high-skilled jobs. Digitalization was regarded as increasing the ratio of high-skilled to low-skilled workers, with firms emphasizing the need for retraining and the reassignment of workers to new tasks supported by digital technologies. I'd say it's important to realize that digital technology is going to have further impacts on labor markets, and also that the fear of job losses without new job opportunities arising is unfounded. What role should um, labour market policies play here? There are a number of policy implications um, regarding income distribution, competition, innovation and education, which may require efforts at both the EU and national level. As a starting point, it's important to provide general access to the new technologies and the corresponding education and training, along with help for business models supporting digital skills, tasks and jobs, as this will be particularly important to digital inclusion. It may also be necessary to adapt regulations of labor, product and financial market regulations in order to fully reap the potential gains from digital technologies while keeping an eye on the more vulnerable groups in the labor market. Digitalization may entail more market concentration among firms, and it is desirable to maintain equal opportunities and incentives for innovation for all firms, while supporting those in the labor market, particularly affected by the transition to a digital economy. Digitalization offers many opportunities, but structural and framework conditions may need to be adapted for the euro area and EU countries to fully reap the potential gains from digitalization while maintaining inclusiveness in the labour market. Okay, Robert, thank you very much. Thank you. Our next guest is Valerie Jarvis, who also works at the ECB as an economist. She's done a lot of work on labour markets over the past few years. Valerie, welcome to the ECB podcast. Thank you. Now let's dig a little deeper into how digitalization affects job creation and start with a question that automatically comes to mind when speaking about technological progress, the historical fear of automation leading to massive job losses. In your paper, you mentioned the Luddite movement in Northern England in the early 1800s. The Luddites were English textile workers and they destroyed textile machinery out of fear that the machines would replace them, a rebellion that lasted some five years. I guess the question is, 
do modern day Luddites have a point? Well, I mean, structural change is always part of the din- dynamic economic process. And of course, technological change often induces technological anxiety and insecurity. But I doubt that the um, Luddites foresaw that the Industrial Revolution preceded, in retrospect, uh, an era of remarkable improvements in standards of living and incomes. Now, in my view, the digital revolution also has the potential to bring about large improvements in productivity and living standards. Of course, there can be disruption to labour markets uh, in cases where digitalisation occurs very rapidly, where workers lose their jobs and find it difficult to get back into employment, even for prolonged periods. And this is, of course, of importance to policymakers and to citizens alike. But digitalization also generates new jobs and tasks. So in our paper, we find that European countries with higher shares of digitally intensive employment are typically those with higher aggregate employment growth. If we take a look at employment growth, um, we've had several decades now of this technological progress automating lots of human tasks. The the other obvious question is how can we actually generate enough jobs for people, this fear of there being jobs disappearing? Well, going back to my last point, I said that, you know, European countries with the high shares of digitally related employment are typically those that are associated also with higher rates of employment growth. One of the main findings and consistent findings of the paper is really the considerable degree of cross-country variation heterogeneity across a range of digitalization metrics in Europe. And we find the same degree of differentiation also when we look at the sort of shares of digitally dependent or digitally intensive employment. Now, there's no standard definition of digitally dependent employment, and it's difficult to measure because we don't want to just count the number of IT specialists in each country. And we don't just want to look at the IT producing sector. We should also take account of those working in sort of digitally intensive occupations and tasks. Because actually, you know, for every one IT specialist in Europe, there are roughly three to four additional workers working in digitally dependent work. So so you're taking quite a broad view there of what what a a digital job is. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what we find is that there are really quite stark differences in the proportions of digitally dependent employment across Europe. So at one end of the spectrum, Luxembourg, with a share of digitally intensive employment of around, well, in excess of 20%, surpasses even the shares that we see in the United States. Now, there are other countries up there, Sweden, the UK, Lithuania, Estonia, the Netherlands. The EU and euro area averages are around 11%. But at the bottom end of the spectrum, these shares are only around 7%. And again, I want to reiterate that it's the countries at the top of the spectrum which have typically been those with the highest rates of employment growth and lower unemployment. Okay, so that's really interesting. So, So countries with more digital jobs tend to have faster employment growth. Yeah. Can you, and that's a that's a, a finding that you came out with from the paper. I mean, what what else do you draw from that? Yeah, I think it's really important to understand the mechanisms of digital job creation here. Um, and if we look at European countries, which typically score well um, across a range of digitalization me- metrics, really, uh, whether we're looking at the shares of IT specialists or digitally dependent employment, whether we're looking at um, the relative sizes of the digital economy across countries, or even um, metrics of the proportions of firms making use of really state-of-the-art high-level cloud computing technologies. We see that three European countries, Sweden, Estonia, and the UK, are typically and consistently towards the top of all of these lists. Now, we could ask what these three countries have in common. Clearly, all three of them have larger IT and telecommunications sectors than most European countries. But what's behind that? And what has helped support so much employment growth in these sectors? Sweden and the UK have both have large audiovisual and broadcasting sectors. 
perhaps for different reasons. In the UK, this reflects their important global position in broadcasting and advertising, while in Sweden, this is more likely the results of um, its strong presence in the development of consumer-oriented media apps, so Sky and Spotify. The UK's strong performance in fintech, business consultancy and e-commerce is also likely to add to its demand for IT specialists. And in Estonia, strong efforts to create public services, so e-government as it's known, has probably been a big driver. But really, um, there's no single mechanism. So so, what you're saying is they've all got very different routes there to that Yeah, they're taking different paths to developing this stronger share of digitally dependent employment. And that should be encouraging to other European countries to know that there are different ways to get there. And, you know, for those that are hoping to increase their own digital sectors. I think the real point from a policy perspective is to remember that those countries with stronger digital employment growth tend to be the ones that have stronger total employment growth and over the past 20 years have also been those with the lowest unemployment rates. Right. So no one should be scared of digitalization. They should be embracing it, really. We should understand that we have opportunities. Okay. And just to circle back very quickly, you mentioned earlier Luxembourg with a very high ratio of digital to non-digital jobs. Um, what, just to fill us in, what, what's their success there? I mean, obviously a smaller country, but... Well, I think, um, again, like the UK, it has a very large fintech sector and that tends to also accompany um, higher rates of uh, digitally dependent employment. Okay, so financial services and, and technology Absolutely. again. Okay. Valerie, thank you very much for your time today. I'm very happy that you invited us. Thank you. This brings us to the end of this episode. So we've talked about the digital revolution and how it's transforming euro area countries in different ways. We took a close look at labour markets and cleared up the myth that more technological progress automatically leads to less jobs. In fact, it looks like the contrary might be the case. Countries that are more digitalised tend to be associated with lower unemployment rates. Stay tuned for the next episode of the podcast, in which we'll focus on how digitalisation can open the door to new jobs with new perspectives. We'd love to hear your feedback and thoughts for future episodes via social media. You can use direct messages and comments. You've been listening to the ECB podcast with Michael Steen. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe and leave us a review. Until next time, thanks for listening.